Let's remind ourselves of the definition of a group. A group is a collection of elements. There is a single operation. The group is closed under this operation. If you combine two elements in the group, you get a third element in the group. There is an identity element. Every element has an inverse, and combining an element with its inverse gives you the identity element. Finally, the elements obey the associative property. But why these rules? What's so special about these properties? I'd like to motivate this definition with a simple example. Imagine that we were asked to define a group. Specifically, we want to define a group for the integers under addition. We want our definition to be as simple as possible. The simpler, the better. One thing we would like to be able to do is solve basic equations. If we're going to generalize algebra, if we're going to abstract algebra, hmm, then we need to be able to solve equations. So let's solve the equation x plus 3 equals 5 and keep track of the properties we use along the way. First, we add negative 3 to both sides. Remember, subtraction is adding negative numbers, so we need inverses in our definition. If we simplify the right-hand side, we get 2. The simple act of adding these two integers requires a closed operation. So let's add this to our definition. Next, we regroup the numbers on the left-hand side. To do this, we need the associative property in our definition of a group. And looky here. 3 plus negative 3 is 0, the identity element. You better believe that's going in our definition. So x equals 2. So it turns out that the definition of a group is the simplest definition that will let you solve a basic equation. Well, isn't that the best thing ever?